This is a continuation of our discussion of amplitude modulation. We're going to explore the concept a little bit differently than before. We're going to talk about upconverting, which is something that happens at the transmitter. We're going to talk about downconverting frequencies, which is something that happens at the receiver. We'll briefly look at the crystal radial, specifically the diode detector. And from there, we'll move on to single sideband. Let's start by looking at the spectrum of AM. In the frequency domain, there's the carrier, a wedge of frequencies on this side of the carrier, a wedge of frequencies on the other side of the carrier. We would call this the upper sideband, and this the lower sideband. In the frequency domain, we have the frequency of the carrier, and at the edge of the upper sideband, we have the frequency of the carrier plus the frequency of the modulating signal. Likewise, here we have the frequency of the carrier minus the frequency of the modulating signal. The bandwidth for an AM transmission is therefore 2 times the frequency of the modulating signal. We can put a, a little subscript on here specifying that it's the maximum frequency. Right? It's this distance right here. It's the maximum frequency. So there's 2 F of M. We should make a note that the upper sideband and the lower sideband are mirror images of each other. And that's something that will be very important to us as we move forward. Closely related to AM is the double sideband suppressed carrier signal. It has a similar spectrum to AM, except it's missing the carrier. So the double sideband suppressed carrier has the lower sideband and the upper sideband. But there is no carrier. Like AM, the bandwidth is 2 by the maximum frequency that's used to modulate the signal. Our next modulation method in the frequency domain is upper sideband, in which case we broadcast only the upper sideband. And of course, if there's an upper sideband, there's going to be a lower sideband. In the frequency domain, we transmit only the lower sideband. The bandwidth is equal to the maximum modulating frequency, likewise for lower sideband. The bandwidth is equal to the maximum of the modulating frequency. For example, if that was a voice signal, chances are there would be a filter that would allow the voice frequencies, which we typically define as 300 to 3000 hertz. So the bandwidth would be equal to this. So for single sideband, the bandwidth would equal 3000 hertz. Again, that would be for upper sideband or lower sideband. Double sideband suppressed carrier, it would be 6000. And for AM, it would be 6000. There are two other methods you might be interested in. One is VSB, which is the vestigial sideband. Remember, in AM, traditional AM, we have the upper and lower sidebands along with the carrier. In VSB, we use a filter. That filter will allow part of one of the sidebands to get through. It allows the carrier to get through, and then it takes the entirety of one of the other sidebands. So in this case, you can see the upper sideband is passed entirely, but the lower sideband is cut off. So this piece is the only part that gets transmitted. It's a compromise where the bandwidth might be approximately 1.5 by the maximum of the modulating frequency. The last method is called independent sideband. In the frequency domain, 
we still have two sidebands. To understand the independent sideband, we have to go up here back to our traditional AM. Remember that the sidebands were mirrored, which is to say the same information was contained in the upper sideband as was contained in the lower sideband? Well, that's not true with independent sideband. Rather than sending mere images, we send different information in each one. For example, if this was stereo, you could send the left side or left channel here and the right channel on this side. And there may or may not be a carrier, which gives us a bandwidth that's equal to two times the maximum of the modulating frequency. But there's two times the information. With all this discussion about modulators, it's important to realize that the modulator and demodulator must be matched. An AM transmitter will be received by an AM receiver. The upper sideband signal must be demodulated with an upper sideband receiver. Same for lower sideband. And that goes for things like frequency modulation, which we'll talk about next time we meet. We see this modulator demodulator pairing when we sketch our model of the communication system. We're assuming voice frequency. Here is our filter. We'll typically set that to 300 to 3000. We'll run that into the modulator. That modulator is typically associated with a local oscillator. Finally, the output of the modulator goes to the broadcast antenna. At various points in this block diagram, you'll also find amplifiers. At the receiver, we start with the antenna. We'll typically find an amplifier. We'll most certainly find a filter. This will be a band pass filter responsible for tuning the receiver. It selects the desired station out of the many that are available. This will be followed by the demodulator. More amplification. And finally, in this particular example, the loudspeaker. As we stated above, the modulator and the demodulator must be matched with each other. If this is a traditional AM modulator, this needs to be a traditional AM demodulator. In a moment, we're going to talk about the concepts of up conversion and down conversion. Before we do that, we need to take a look at this local oscillator. At this point, you've worked enough AM problems to know that this is the carrier. The carrier has the same frequency as the local oscillator. In fact, the carrier is produced from the local oscillator. And of course, from there, we add the upper sideband and the lower sideband. Something to realize is that the frequency of the carrier is much greater than the frequency of the modulating signal. In this particular example, 3000 is the maximum frequency of our modulating signal. So we call this FM max. With this concept in mind, you might say that the transmitter has performed an up conversion. It's taken this low frequency intelligence, otherwise known as a baseband frequency, and it has up converted it such that it rides or resides with the carrier. The receiver does the exact opposite. It takes the high frequency carrier and the sidebands and down converts it to recover the original audio. 
So we have up conversion in the transmitter and down conversion in the receiver. All right, let's look at up conversion. We'll start with the voice frequency. In the past, we've talked about a zero frequency and we show in voice as a wedge extending from 300 to 3000 Hertz. To make things conceptually simpler, we're going to allow negative frequencies to exist. We're going to call this a two-sided spectrum, which allows negative frequencies. Essentially what we've done is we've taken our voice frequency, which was in the positive 300 to 3000, and we have mirrored it across zero, so it now appears from negative 300 to 3000 hertz. This isn't as strange as it might seem because this is actually what you will see on some spectrum analyzers. That's the starting point. We start with the voice frequencies. They are sent through a modulator. We'll assume an amplitude modulator. The result is those voice frequencies are now centered about the carrier. We have the upper sideband and the lower sideband. If you allowed for negative frequencies, you can see that the voice has just been shifted. So now instead of appearing at baseband, which is to say at zero hertz, it now appears centered around the carrier. You could say that the modulation process is an up conversion, keeping in mind that the frequency of the carrier is significantly higher than the frequency of the modulating signal. At the block diagram level, okay, so maybe stick figures aren't part of block diagrams, but that's okay. There's the microphone. The microphone goes through a filter. The filter goes to a mixer. The mixer is associated with a local oscillator. Next is an adder to re-inject the carrier. And finally, we have the broadcast antenna. Again, mixer and adder. Earlier, we said that the frequency of the local oscillator is the frequency of the carrier. At this point, we have the sums and the differences, which would be FC plus FM and FC minus FM. And of course, at the output of the adder, we inject the carrier. So now it's going to be FC, FC plus FM, and FC minus FM. If we back up just a little bit, this piece here, is considered the modulator. The input is the low frequency baseband signal, which we've called F sub M. The output is the carrier, and then the carrier plus and minus the modulating frequency. As far as the spectrum is concerned, we took this voice frequency, which was centered at zero hertz, and we've up converted it so that it is now centered on the carrier. In the receiver, the exact opposite happens. The input to the receiver is that AM modulated signal, 
that's riding at the frequency of the carrier. It is demodulated to recover our baseband voice frequency, which is centered at zero hertz. This operation starts at the receiving antenna, which is followed by an amplifier, a filter to tune the receiver. So that's going to be a band pass. We'll label that tune. This is followed by a mixer of some sort. For our purposes right now, we're just going to call this a nonlinear device. Next is another filter. This will be a low pass filter, followed by an amplifier, and finally the loudspeaker. At this point, we have the carrier, the carrier plus the modulating frequency, and the carrier minus the modulating frequency. From the output of the mixer, we have sums and differences. For example, if we were to mix these two, we would find a signal at two times the carrier, and we would find the difference back at baseband. In tabular form, these sums and differences would be twice the carrier frequency plus the modulating frequency twice the carrier frequency minus the modulating frequency, a negative of the modulating frequency, and the modulating frequency. These we're going to filter out. That's the purpose of this filter. It gets rid of these signals and it keeps these. You know, as I think about it, I don't know that we stressed this enough when we talked about sums and differences. For example, if we go back and we talk about this up conversion, isn't that just a sums and differences question? So the mixer, in this case right here, has taken in the frequency of the modulation and it's taken in the local oscillator, and it's produced the sums and differences, which are right there. It's a sums of the carrier and the modulating frequency and the difference. So it's the carrier minus the modulating frequency. When we look at the down conversion, it's the same thing. We've taken the difference. We've taken the sums and differences of these signals. Let's go back and look at this again, except this time, let's look at everything in the frequency domain. Were we to look here at the input to the receiver, in the frequency domain, we would see many different radio stations. I'm simply going to draw them as spikes for now. The purpose of this filter is to select one of those stations. So maybe we're interested in this one right here. So we band pass filter it. After the signal is tuned, we can expect to see the carrier and the upper and lower sideband. After passing through this nonlinear device, we end up with sums and differences. Down here at zero hertz, we recover our baseband voice frequencies. Meanwhile, way up here at two times the carrier frequency, we have copies of the upper sideband and lower sideband. These frequencies are of no use to us, so we get rid of them with a filter. That's the purpose of this filter here. It low passes these frequencies right here to recover our baseband voice. As a side note, this is a good time to talk about the crystal radio. This is arguably one of the simplest radios that anybody could build. It starts with a long wire antenna 
the energy from that antenna is sent to a coil and that coil is then grounded. The energy is picked up by a second coil. There's a capacitor here, usually of the variable type, a diode, another capacitor, and finally, to listen to the signal, you'd find a pair of headphones. The circuit doesn't look like much, but everything is there. Everything is there to perform AM demodulation. The first operation the circuit performs is tuning. We have an L and a C. Together, they form a parallel resonant circuit otherwise known as a tank circuit, where the resonant frequency is equal to 1 over 2 pi root LC. Right, so that's the tuning operation. This diode is a nonlinear element. Some folks would call it a detector. You could even describe it as a mixer. This capacitor here serves as a low-pass filter. In block diagram form, this simple little crystal radio looks something like this. We have a bandpass filter formed by the inductor and capacitor. That's followed by the nonlinear element, which in this case is the diode. The output of the diode will be sums and differences. We use a low pass filter to select the differences to recover our original baseband. So tuning is performed here, mixing is performed here, and low pass filtering is performed here. There's really not that much to this crystal radio. The technology is about as old as you can get in radio. You know, we're talking about stuff that was turn of the century in the 1900s. Fast forward about two decades and we land in the year 1920 where you could find something called a super heterodyne receiver. By the way, the word heterodyne means to beat together, where we take two signals we run them through a nonlinear element, and we end up with sums and differences. That should sound really familiar. That's part of our up conversion and down conversion. The receiver starts out the same as any other receiver with an antenna. From there, a tuner, which is, of course, bandpass. This is the first mixer. It's associated with a local oscillator. The output of the mixer, which is the sums and differences, is fed to a filter, amplifier, and another matched filter. Next is the diode. Yet another filter, this time low pass, an amplifier, and then the loudspeaker or headphones. This section right here is absolutely critical to the superheterodyne receiver. It's known as the intermediate amplifier. Think of this as the heart of the receiver. This is a high performance amplifier, but it only operates at one frequency. For example, 455 kilohertz was pretty common. That implies that the front end of the receiver has to work such that the output of this mixer, this line right here, will be at 455 kilohertz. When you look at the old radios, you'll see that the local oscillator would move in frequency, as would the tuning section. So together, the operation of this first filter and the local oscillator would always put the station of interest right here at 455 kilohertz. Before we move on, let's take another look at this receiver. 
notice that it has two mixers. This is a double conversion operation. For example, if the station of interest was centered at 1 megahertz, the front end would work together to take and down convert the signal so that instead of being centered at 1 megahertz, it was now centered at 455 kilohertz. That's the first conversion. The second conversion takes place right here. And you'll recognize that as the diode from our crystal radial. We end up with sums and differences. After it's filtered out, we end up with a signal that's centered at zero hertz. That's two conversions. That's two down conversions. One megahertz is brought down to 455 kilohertz. That in turn is brought down to zero hertz. Now, hold that thought in your mind because we're going to come back to this after we explore single sideband transmitters. At this point, we've looked at these mixers many times. Modulating frequency goes in, local oscillator goes in, the output is the frequency of the carrier plus the modulating frequency and frequency carrier minus the modulating frequency. So sums and differences of what went in. In the spectrum, that looks like this. Assuming we have a very good mixer, there will be no carrier here. It will be completely suppressed, and we'll have the upper sideband and lower sideband. From our opening discussion, you know that we could stop here. We would have a double sideband suppressed carrier transmission. This signal is useful because you remember that in an AM transmitter with 100% modulation, the power in the sidebands is equal to half the power in the carrier. So if you can get by without the carrier, you've just saved a considerable amount of power, and that is exactly what this double sideband suppressed carrier does. But remember, somewhere in this lecture, we talked about these being mirrored. Since they are mirror images of each other, we could simply transmit one of them. For example, the upper sideband all by itself, or the lower sideband all by itself. There's no carrier, and there's only one sideband, so it becomes spectrally very efficient because it has a narrow bandwidth and it's very efficient from a power perspective. At the block diagram level, this is fairly easy to represent, although building one is something else. Frequency of modulation comes in, it gets mixed with the local oscillator, and now for the output, just remove one of the sidebands. So if we low pass filter this, we're all set. Remember your sums and differences. So frequency of carrier plus frequency of modulation and FC minus F sub M. That's what we see here. Assuming this is a upper sideband filter, we're left with FC plus F M. In the frequency domain, there's our original voice centered at zero. The output of the mixer provided upper and lower sideband centered at the local oscillator, which is also known as the carrier. And the output, the part that actually gets broadcast, is just the upper sideband above the carrier. Again, this is the signal that's broadcast. 
which brings us back to our receiver. If we assume a 1 megahertz signal, the spectrum would look like this, with this here, this point right there being 1 megahertz. The desired input signal is mixed with the local oscillator to provide the sums and differences at the output of the first mixer. Now we don't know if the local oscillator is higher or lower, but it doesn't matter because when we're done and after it goes through this intermediate amplifier, the spectrum looks like this. There's the voice wedge, and it's centered at 455 kilohertz. This is all fine. This is exactly what we need. But it turns out that there's a problem with this type of receiver. If you were to listen to it, you would hear nothing. You would not hear the upper sideband signal. And the reason is, is because there's nothing to heterodyne against. Let's back up a bit to understand why. Remember the first time we talked about this radio? There would have been a carrier, an upper sideband and a lower sideband, because we were sending an AM signal through. Now, to be sure, this 1 megahertz signal had been down converted to 455 kilohertz, but it still looked like that. There was a carrier, an upper sideband, and a lower sideband. Well, that's not the case anymore. There is no carrier. There is no carrier to heterodyne against, so there will be no output. To convert this AM receiver to a upper sideband receiver, we need to add a component right here. Another oscillator known as the beat frequency oscillator. Essentially what we have done is we've reinserted the carrier. That carrier then heterodynes against the upper sideband, which will give us the sums and differences. We take the differences through the filter, recovering our original baseband signal. Let's go take a look at some real signals to see if we can make some sense of this. This receiver is tuned to the 40 meter amateur radio band. These transmissions are typically done using lower sideband. I'm going to deliberately use the wrong sideband now. So I've just shifted to upper sideband and let's see what it sounds like. No matter where you go, no matter where you go, it sounds horrible. You, in fact, you can't tell what they're saying. Right? It's certainly a strong signal, but you can't understand it. The reason you can't understand it is because the high frequencies have become low and the low frequencies have become high. Remember, the sidebands are mirrored, so it's like you were looking in the mirror the wrong direction. However, if we shift it to lower sideband and try again, I think you'll find the results are much better. You'll notice that I'm having some difficulty tuning these single sideband transmissions. And the reason that they don't sound very well is because we no longer have that great, big, beautiful carrier to heterodyne against. You have to have precise tuning to reinsert your own reckoning of the carrier. And if you're off by even a little amount, it sounds horrible. We can contrast that with a full-blown AM transmission. So we're going to go back down to the lower end of the band to radio 4 at 198 kilohertz. And that should sound reasonable. I certainly have not attended any wedding since before the first lockdown over here. Absolutely clear. Now here's something interesting. If we were to shift to lower sideband, 
and widen that filter. I think you would say it sounds okay. This wedding video for a week or so now, and it seems that word has got around. Or if we shifted to upper sideband, open the filter a little bit, and. Now by friends, apparently the BBC is at the Sedeguru Rebbe's house. It sounds reasonable. However, if you were to be off a little bit on tuning, you see what I've done there? So this is now where the center of the receiver is. If we listen to it, I don't think you're going to like the sound. That tone you're hearing is the reinserted carrier heterodyning with the actual carrier of the transmission. If there's any deviation between the carrier you're reinserting and the carrier that's actually being transmitted, you will hear that tone. Moving back to our super heterodyne receiver, I suppose you could argue that there needs to be a switch right here. A switch that will turn the beat frequency oscillator on and off. If you are in AM mode, turn the BFO off. If you are in upper sideband or lower sideband, turn the beat frequency oscillator on. We need that beat frequency oscillator present so the second mixer has something to heterodyne the received signal against. Just like we saw on our web receiver. If you're in AM mode, which is to say the BFO is turned off, you cannot demodulate either an upper sideband or a lower sideband signal. Well, there you have it. That almost scratches the surface of amplitude modulation. Unfortunately, we're going to have to move on. So next time we meet, we'll talk about frequency modulation, which will be quickly followed by forms of digital modulation.